Hey everyone, it's Mike from the SEO Pub, and what I want to share in this video is how I use SEMrush to uncover new niches that I may want to jump into. This is going to be more for the affiliate marketers out there, and I've been building affiliate sites for a long time, and this is a, a tactic I've used for a long time to find new niches that I want to investigate further or maybe want to jump right into. The first thing you want to do is you want to find sites that are really not much more than a, a guest blogging site or a site that sells a lot of links and that you want the really popular sites though that are kind of thinly veiled as a legitimate site. Um, sites I'm talking about are sites like Forbes or Huffington Post or Inc.com. These sites you can find tons of people who are you can hire to put a piece of content on the site for you or they're selling links right on the site. Those there's And there's tons of these sites out there. Those are the type of ones that you want to find. I'm going to use Forbes as an example to show you uh, the technique, but any of these types of sites will work. So the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to toss the site into SEMrush. Now you could also use a Arefs for this. Um, some of the crappy tools out there would probably work also like Uber suggest or Moz, but I haven't touched any of those in a long time. Uh, I would imagine they have this functionality though, that you could make them work for this too, but I prefer to use SEMrush. So toss the site, we're gonna to toss Forbes into SEMrush. And there's two ways that you can do this. You can search by keyword or you can search by page. If we go down here to the keywords, I prefer searching by page, but I'm gonna show you both. You wanna use, what you wanna do is you have all these keywords that Forbes ranks for, and you wanna use the filters to filter it down. And you, what you wanna do here is we're gonna use words like top or best. And the idea is we wanna find those articles. You see these all the time with affiliate sites at top, desk chairs for 2022 or top uh top accessories for macbook pro um or you'll see best mics for streaming videos uh, or best mics for twitch streaming so you want to use words like that top and best and so you want to use terms like that top best uh you can use the the year 2022 because you see a lot of affiliate sites that put the you know the best uh iPhone charger, wireless iPhone charger 2022. It works for doing the keyword search, but you're gonna have a lot more to sort through and top doesn't work quite as well for the keywords, but if we do best, we'll see some better options in here. But there's gonna be a lot of other stuff mixed in that it's it's a lot, it'll take you a lot longer to sort through if you do it this way. What I like to do instead is go to the pages and I want to sort by the URL containing, and again, we'll do top. If you use top though, you wanna put a hyphen after it because what you're trying to find is uh, cases where top is used in the URL and a hyphen follows it. If you just put the word top, you'll also get any URL that has the word stop in it or anything else that TOP shows up. You'll get, you'll get a lot that's not exactly what we're looking for, but this is what we're looking for. If you put the top hyphen, Here's top 10 cryptocurrencies, um, top colleges, uh, top rooftop cargo carriers, bucket list travel, the top 50 places in the world, uh, top 50 most valuable Pokemon cards, all kinds of stuff you'll, you'll find here. And you can do the same thing again. Like I said, use best, or you could use the current year. Affiliate marketers love to put that, you know, best, whatever 2022 so you have all this huge list to go through you know we have tons of pages to go through i usually just sort it by traffic just to you know see the most popular ones but you could also do the opposite you could sort it backwards to see ones that maybe are a little bit newer or maybe ones that are kind of haven't been touched as much yet or not as popular that you can be a, a bigger fish in a small pond maybe but there's a ton of different options here a ton of different ideas what I like to do then is I pick one and like, let's just do best in indoor plants. And it brings up all the keywords now that that page is ranking for. And what I'll do inside SEMrush then I'll start and I went through and did this. I, I, I'll add them all to, uh, I'll set up a listing in the keyword manager and I'll start adding keywords that I want to use into keyword manager or keywords that I want to investigate further. And besides adding them in the keyword manager, what I also do, if you hit the little arrows here, it'll show you some information about the SERP and some of the search results and the keyword itself. I also look at these questions and see, okay, is that an option too? And I'll go ahead and open that up and then see, oh, there's, there's more keywords relating to that. 
Great, let's grab those. And I'll go back and a lot of the, the more popular ones, I'll open these up just to see what kind of questions pop up. I'll give you a lot of ideas for different keywords and maybe different directions of, of content you wanna create for your affiliate site. Now, most of the time, this is gonna give you a big enough list of keywords to get started with. If not though, what you can do is you can do this same technique and go back now, we, we used Forbes, so now go back into Huffington Post or Inc.com and do the same kind of search by pages, but look for indoor plants. If we're, if we're doing indoor plants or whatever topic you pick, pick up their page, look at the keywords that their page is ranking for, and you can add more keywords that way. You can also play around in the keyword magic tool to generate more keywords, look for similar pages on the, on the same site even. You know, I mentioned you could go to another site and look for a page, but you could stay on Forbes and see if there's other pages about plants if you wanted to. Um, for example, if we go back to the list of pages, And now we find these other pa pages about plants. You also find implants, um, dental implants, best places to buy indoor plants online, best fake plants, uh, best plants for pool landscaping. And you could start investigating these pages, grab a bunch more keywords, and just keep building out your keyword list this way so that you're ready to go for uh, the next step, which the next step I would do if I'm building an affiliate site based on this is then taking those keywords and I'm gonna want to organize them and sort them. And the fastest way to do this is through a, another tool called Keyword Cupid. What Keyword Cupid is going to do is it's going to organize the keywords into silos for you. So you can pull a SEMrush report. I already exported my keywords into an Excel spreadsheet and we're going to pull it's from the Keyword Magic tool. Um, I think we have about a hundred keywords on there. And we're going to do the SERP spy. Oops, I need to name it. So we'll name it uh, plant example. And we'll go ahead and run that. Now, I already started running it earlier before I started this video because it does take it about 20 to 25 minutes or so to run the report. So I'm going to let this run and then I'll come back and we'll show you the result. Okay. After the report is finished, you can download it and then open it up in a spreadsheet that will look like this. And this one's going to be a little different. I'll, maybe I'll do another video about keyword Cupid um, with a little bit more robust selection of keywords. But what it does is it shows you in the first tab, all your silos, and then it narrows them down to big silos and small silos. The big silos are the major where the majority of your keywords are going to fall. What Keyword Cupid does is based on Google's natural language processing is it organizes these into topics or entities or whatever you want to call it and silos everything. A lot of times when you run these reports, you'll have each of these boxes is one silo and then this is a page. It'll have multiple pages that belong in the silo, but because this is just a limited example where I did just a bunch of keywords about uh, indoor plants, it's kind of lumping uh, most of them into their own silo together. Uh, but what it does then, it organizes everything for you. Um, it will run some, I selected the option to show some additional data. I don't really use this much, but I just did it for this video where it'll show, uh, it gives you an average difficulty, cost per click, average content length. It's looking at the top ranking uh, pages for each of these keywords. Looks at the uh, H1s, H2s, H3s, bolded keywords, average number of links, uh, images, all, all that stuff you can take a look at yourself. And then it has the small silos, um, which are just keywords that were, again, literally like it says, it's just a smaller group of keywords together. And then you have singles. Singles are keywords that didn't really fit into any of the other silos, so the program didn't know where to put them. So they end up here in the singles. So again, from beginning to end, that's how I identify a new niche that I may want to jump into, put together a keyword list. And then from here, I would start planning out if I'm going to build a site or if I have an existing site, that I'm going to do this, how I'm going to start planning out my content using Keyword Cupid and organizing these keywords together. Each of these are going to be their own page. And then these are going to be the supporting 
keywords for that page. I'm going to try to use uh, as many of these keywords as I can uh, for that page. And of course, as I've shown in other videos, I'm going to use phrase to optimize that content as it's being created. All right, that's it for this video. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments down below. Also, make sure you go to the seopub.com and sign up for the email list there. I send out tips like this every single Thursday. And I'll see everyone in the next video.